From start to finish, yesterday's Watkins Glen race was the best road course of the year and I, I think is an example of what NASCAR wants the next generation to perform like on road courses. We had multiple leaders and while Chase Elliott, he clearly had the best car, he did not dominate the day. We saw guys like Michael McDowell probably scare the crap out of Ryan Blaney for a little bit, uh, potentially leading and winning that and being the 16th winner this year. But um, real quick, I wanted to kind of talk about Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex. Um, if I'm Joe Gibbs and Roger Penske, I'm really starting to turn the heater on James Small and Jonathan Hassler's seats because I've never seen a worse choke job by crew chiefs not being able to get their cars set up right when it matters most. In the last few weeks, neither Blaney or Truex have had a car to even contend for a win and hardly had top 10 cars. Like, it's it's like neither one of these teams wants to make the playoffs. But the race itself was great all the way around. We saw Hendrick teammates go head to head only for Larson to essentially move Elliott out of contention for the win. And let's go ahead and get the one thing that we should all agree on out of the way. Yes, Larson moved Elliott. He may have locked up his tires, he may have been trying not to, you know, completely ruin Elliott's day, but he practically admitted that moving him was intentional post-race. The question becomes, was it a fair or foul move? And in my opinion, it's a little bit of both. Elliott had the fastest car all day, and Larson said in his post-race interview that if he was going to have a shot to win, he had to make that move on the restart. And I personally never have any issue with drivers using contact to give themselves a chance. Obviously, you don't want to just outright wreck somebody, but what Larson's move was in a vacuum, I am perfectly okay with. I think that that is just a part of stock car racing, and if you don't really care to see that kind of stuff, you that that's why we make IndyCar. But what I didn't like was that this move was used on a teammate. I personally think that when it comes to your teammate, a certain level of respect should be given, and honestly, I don't think that, you know, that respect was shown on Larson's part to Elliot. But, I don't think it was so egregious that it should be crucified, or Larson should be crucified, I mean. I mean, in my opinion, it's not near as egregious as, you know, Austin Sindrick's block on, or lack thereof a block, on Ryan Blaney in this year's Daytona 500 that just doored Blaney because, I mean, especially whenever you think about the fact that Blaney gave him the lead, and then whenever he went to have a chance to win, Cindric just nailed him into the wall. It wasn't as egregious as that, but again, each instance, you race a teammate differently than you would race everyone else on the track, in my opinion. But Chase Elliott, despite saying all the right things, was clearly upset, and rightfully so, I think that Elliot is not the type to dole out direct retaliation to a teammate especially. I think that we're continuing to see a power struggle at HMS that I think kind of was subtly starting last year, but kind of was really creeping into the mainstream uh, with the incident between him and Larson at Auto Club earlier this year. Uh, it's two immensely talented drivers who are each not only fighting for alpha status on their own team, but status is the best driver in the entire sport, and it's a good problem to have if you're Hendrick, but the animosity is sure to be palpable at the, today's meetings. Overall, I think it was a hard racing move and 100% okay in a, in a certain way of thinking about it, like I said, but when it's done to a teammate, that's whenever I just can't fully agree with it, and I think Elliot has every right to be really upset and uh, we'll, we'll see if anything comes from it, um, but I think that we witnessed the beginning of what's probably going to be one of the most epic competitive rivalries we've seen since Gordon and Johnson. And you know, that, sure enough, as soon as Chase Elliott got out of his car, he went over and talked to Jeff Gordon and Rick Hendrick, and you can see him, uh, while we can't know exactly what he said, lip readers have seemed to indicate that he's saying, this cannot be fixed which obviously is implying that now him and Larson's relationship is definitely not in a good space. Uh, who knows really what will be said today in meetings, who knows how this will be worked through, but I have a feeling that uh, Hendrick is going to have 
his, um, his hands full for quite a while with these two. Moving on past the race, I want to talk about a really difficult decision that I think NASCAR has ahead of them. Um, we all know that the playoff system has a lot of holes in it still, and I think that the Kurt Busch situation highlights a major one still in place. Kurt Busch is currently out with an injury until at least the first race of the playoffs. He has already been uh, determined out for Daytona next week, but there is still no guarantee that Kurt will even be back before the end of the first round. So you have a guy who very well might be an automatic out in the first round, while you've got two guys in Blaney and Truex, and potentially maybe both of them, depending on what happens at Daytona, uh, who could miss the playoffs entirely. NASCAR has given out medical waivers before, but the injury has now overlapped with the playoffs. So this decision, or maybe more accurately, a possible non-decision by NASCAR, is going to set a major precedent that will carry on until the end of this format. So NASCAR could obviously just do nothing. They've given Bush a waiver, he won his race, and if he doesn't race again the entire year, it's irrelevant because he's earned that playoff spot. So honestly, that's probably the best and least controversial move for them to make. However, you still got the two drivers in Blaney and Truex who both arguably deserve playoff bursts. The question gets raised whether NASCAR should either take away Bush's waiver or if Bush and 2311 should forfeit their playoff spot, and more than likely 2311 isn't going to give up their playoff spot. So it comes down to whether or not NASCAR wants to intervene. So my own idea, if NASCAR is going to intervene, they need to do so before this weekend's events at Daytona. We need to know exactly what everyone is racing for at Daytona. If there's one spot or two spots available, we need to know the exact situation when the green flag waves at Daytona. I think, and this is just my own personal idea, a reasonable solution for NASCAR, if they were going to intervene, would be to give Bush and his doctors a Thursday, August 25th deadline to decide whether to rule him out or race at Darlington, the first race in the first round of the playoffs. If Bush is cleared, then he keeps that spot and he races like nothing ever happened. If he cannot get cleared, if he cannot race that first race of the playoffs, then NASCAR can pull his playoff spot and forfeit that spot. And now we have two potential spots that will more than likely go to Blaney or Truex, depending on if somebody else wins at Daytona. Now, the issue I take with this, and like I said, it was just an idea, but the, the issue I take for my own idea is that I think that it, it, it kind of could put Bush in a very bad situation where you kind of force him into maybe coming back before he's ready or capable and maybe get hurt more. But at the same time, you know, we as fans should expect 16 drivers that make the playoffs to all be racing and to all have a chance at a championship. And I, I just, I don't think that leaving Kurt Busch in it if he's not even going to be able to race isn't 100% fair. But at the same time, it, it's it's how the rules currently are set in place. I think if, if I really had a, a, a say in what happens... Personally, I think NASCAR should just take the hands-off approach, stick to the rules they've laid out this year, which would mean Bush keeps his playoff spot, but I think the whole playoff waiver thing should be given some con serious consideration next season. I'm personally not a big fan of them, uh, and I, I say this being aware that Kyle Busch would probably have one less championship, or actually I know he would have one less championship if that was the case, but if you are a driver and you win a race, get into the playoffs, but then get injured, and that injury causes you to miss enough races that you fall out of the top 30, then in my opinion, you should not be allowed to still compete in the playoffs. I just think we need to get rid of uh, medical waivers in general when it comes to the playoffs. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Do you think that NASCAR should look into possibly taking Kurt's maybe lame duck playoff spot away? Or do you think they should just leave it alone? And what do you think about the Larson and Elliott beef? Was the move Larson made fair or foul? Tell me what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.